This is a quick update on the environment sensor that I am building for coffee trees. Now the goal of the sensor is to monitor shaded and unshaded trees and see what the difference is in the, the moisture level of the soil, maybe the moisture level of the tree versus how much light each tree is getting. So each of these environment sensors are going to have to monitor soil moisture as well as the amount of light that's reaching the tree at a bare minimum. Now, one of the first sensors that I bought for this prototype that I'm working on was a TSL2561 light sensor. And what I learned after I bought the light sensor is that it has a maximum capacity of only 17,000 lux. And direct sunlight can get all the way up to 120,000 lux. So I had a problem that I needed to fix. And you can buy sensors that will detect the full, full uh, capacity of light uh, all the way up to over 120,000 lux. The problem is those sensors are very expensive, three or four hundred dollars. And that's cost prohibitive for this project in, in the prototype stage. So what I've done is in addition to having the TSL2561 mounted here, this is the TSL2561, I have also installed this liquid crystal light valve from Adafruit. And this is very cool um, glass that has liquid crystal mounted between two planes of glass. And there are four probes on the four corners of the glass. And the two probes closest to each other are the same and the two probes furthest from each other are opposites. So there isn't, there's no polarity to it as long as you have positive on one side and negative on the other and you put up to five volts through this glass, that will darken the glass. So I thought, when I saw this, I thought I could use that to block, control some of the light that gets to the sensor so that uh, at peak sunlight, for example, when the sun is 120,000 lux pumping into the sensor, I can reduce that amount with the glass at a controlled level. And then later, when I'm going through the analysis and looking at the data, I can see that I reduced the amount of light, we'll say, by six-fold or six times. And then I can do the calculations and find out approximately what the real amount of lux was that would have hit the sensor. Um, and in this fashion, if I do this on both sensors, I can then compare apples to apples and say, okay, at midday, both sensors were cutting the light down by 50%, and I saw this reading on the Lux sensor, so I know to multiply that reading by two. Uh, the, the glass from Adafruit cost $7. The sensor uh, also from Adafruit cost a little more than $5. So for a $12 solution, I'm hoping that I can get decent data that will at least tell a story accurately. And then later on down the road, maybe I can purchase the proper sensors at three or $400 a piece. Here is the glass kind of close up, and this is the default transparency of the glass with no electricity running through it. It's kind of dark by default, so I do get an amount of light reduction just by having the glass on the sensor. And then as you apply electricity to this, it gets darker in proportion to the amount of electricity that, that you apply. This is a five volt piece of glass, which means that the maximum voltage you want to put through it is five volts. But at two and a half volts, it will be half as dark as its maximum. The darkness will be at 50%. It never gets fully opaque. It never blocks out all light. Uh, it blocks out an awful lot. The Arduino that I'm using is a three volt system and that means that I'm going to get even less blockage, but I think it's okay because I'm, it's blocking an awful lot. And the way I plan on doing it is having the glass sit right over top of the sensor like this. 
and then when I darken the glass, it will have maximum effect on the sensor. Whereas if I have it a little bit up like this, some light's going to get in through the sides. Also, I'm going to be using probably an electrical gang box that's waterproof to put it in, and that gang box has a limited amount of space this way. So I have to get everything mashed in, so that glass is going to be down on top of the sensor. A little bit about the sensor itself, you can see down here on the bottom, I have three boards. Uh, this, is, this is one, two, and three. And this bottom board is uh, an SD card writer and a real-time clock with a, a battery. And this second board right now, it's the Adafruit Feather Huza that uh, is a Wi-Fi enabled chip. Um, very nice. I'm, I'm spoiling myself because it has an awful lot of program space and that allows me to get kind of crazy with the amount of code that I throw at it. And I'm afraid that the, the production sensor won't have enough space. Uh, but that's later on down the road. And then the top board that I have here, this is um, basically a proto board. And on that, I have permanently soldered all of the wiring for the two sensors. So here you can see I have a TSL2561, and I also have a BMP180 for barometric pressure and temperature. And with that, it's just a general all-purpose sensor that I have on here to gather data. I don't know how useful that's going to be in this specific project, um, but we'll see. It doesn't, uh, it takes up code and that's about it, and it takes up physical space, but not a lot. I've also mounted on here a, uh, a switch so that I can just turn this on and off as I, as I need to. And I've been carrying this around in a little Pelican waterproof case that I can just leave outside somewhere and run tests and gather data and see how it's doing. Um, put it through different conditions, test and see how long the battery lasts, these sorts of things. And it, 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 the Pelican case works pretty well. Um, I, so I think that, um, that that shows me that I think that the gang box is going to work well as a container as well. So that's the update on the environment sensor, and um, I'll let you know more when I know more.